Phew! That was a scary chapter. We are safe now. Uh, kind of. The girl's dark bedroom is still and quiet. A sitting child's shape is illuminated under the bed cover. Mona is 12 years old and hiding beneath the sheet. Hiding is her default position in life. She is unsteady in her personality, confidence, and on her feet. Fearfully alert, she comes from under her literal safety blanket, wielding her torch as a weapon against the dark. She shines the beam at the closet. It's closed. She shines it under her bed. Clear. She shines it at the window. Unlocked! Racing to move before panic sends her back under the quilt, Mona turns sideways and swings her legs out of the bed, ready to stand up. Her pyjama bottoms have ridden up, revealing her left leg is prosthetic. It's dull and grey. Even though no one is around, she adjusts her pyjamas to cover her false leg, hiding it even if it's just from herself. She bounces to the window, locks it, bounces back to the bed and dives under the covers into safety again. She pokes her head back out and repeats her nightly checks. She shines the torch at the closet. It's closed. She shines it under the bed. Clear. She shines it at her window. Locked. Situation controlled. Her well-used sketchbooks are on the bedside table. Above it, on the wall, is a checklist. Laminated, colour-coded, no-nonsense font, professional-looking and titled Do this or get eaten! The days of the week run along the top line and down the side are the four nightly tasks. They read Closet Under Bed window and trap. She ticks the first three. She softly tweaks a fishing line that is tied at her headboard. The vibrations quiver upwards to an almost invisible line crisscrossing the bedroom like a spider's web spun by a paranoid safety conscious arachnid. It goes from her bed to a shelf of spelling, science and technology trophies, weaves through old photos of the family together. One of her at four years old with her dad and her mum all looking happy. One of them from a few years ago where her mum looks sad. And one from now where it's just her and dad. There's a separate photo of mum looking life tired. The wire goes on and wraps around her dusty, cuddly toys in the corner, all of which have bandages and plasters on. Up to a pulley in the ceiling and behind a metal bin over the door with a picture of a unicorn on it. The wire finishes in a loop on the floor in front of the door. Everything is in order. On her laminated chart, she puts a tick by the word trap. She switches her torch off, but keeps her eyes open, bringing the blankets up to settle right under them, fending off the darkness, and more importantly, whatever is waiting in it. Roar! A distinct but distant roar comes from the outside. Her eyes get unfeasibly larger as she freezes in place, tension stiffening every muscle. Hyper aware, her ears now two ultra sensitive satellite dishes tuned and honed to detect even the slightest noise vibration in the air. She hears nothing. Then it's closer still. 
She heads under the blanket for safety, but her boom-beating heart lets her know there is none. That's when she hears something unimaginable. The door handle rattles. She hears the slow creak of the door being pushed open. The fishing wire tightens and the trap fires. Trophies are all pulled off the shelf, hanging now in a net as a counterweight. The cuddly toys fly towards the door, as do the photos, all tied together like a bowler missile. The bin falls, the loop closes around an intruder's leg. She hears the bang, crash, flounderings of whatever vile creature has been caught in it. Then she hears... Um, Mona, didn't we have a talk about this? Many, many talks about your many, many monster traps. Mona dares to come out from under the blanket. Dad is in his thirties and normally academic looking. Less so now with the bin on his head. Cuddly toys and photos have Dad's arms bound and his right leg is being lifted about a foot off the floor in the noose trap. As he tries to struggle free, to put his foot down on the floor, the trophies that are being used as the counterweight pulls his leg back in the air. Mona is still on high alert. Did you hear it? The roar, the monster, it came from the forest out back. Dad is a patient man, a caring man, an understanding man. But it's late and he has heard this crazy talk a lot. He is tied up, his leg is in the air and there is a bin on his head which smells like old bananas. This is enough to make anyone slightly snarky. The forest, the monsters again. We will check again in the morning. Now, Mona, mate, it's late. It's a school night, go to bed, I was trying. Mona interrupts, matching his snark. Everything dad says lately annoys her. She's become more adversarial towards him. She doesn't know why, and she can't stop it. Dad sighs out his frustration, which echoes around the bin. Dad only wants to be a friend and help her heal but everything he says lately seems to annoy her. He doesn't know why, but he wish he could stop it. As his audible anguish stops bouncing around the tin bin, he steadies himself, calm again, patient again. He tries again. Good, great even. We are at an understanding. We can search tomorrow, chat tomorrow, but right now it's sleep time. Um, but can you set me free first? Dad pleads calmly from under the stinky full-faced helmet. Mona gets out of bed and slightly limps as she undoes the trap which releases Dad. He puts all the stuff back on the shelf in a messy lump, only stopping briefly to look at the older photo of the family together. He places that down gently. Mona gets back into bed. Dad nods to Mona. Hey, you know the leg needs to sleep in its own bed. Reluctantly from under the sheets, Mona undoes her prosthetic leg and hands it out to her dad. She doesn't let him see her short leg. She looks at the prosthetic with shame. Dad notices. He doesn't know what to do, but he notices. The prosthetic is up past the knee. Dad puts it next to the window. He grabs a sweater that's on the floor and wraps it around the leg, tucking it in. Dad pats it on the head. Nighty night, Lefty. Mona is not amused. I hate it when you call it that. I don't know why I can't keep it on. What if, what if I need to run? From what? Bed bugs? Dad inquires. She kicks straight fire back. Monsters, Dad. Monsters. Well, ask them to wait while you put Lefty on. Most monsters I know are very polite. I mean, yeah, yeah, they will eat you, but they do have manners. They wipe their mouths after. Dad, amusing himself, starts a playful bout. Mona is in no mood for a word joust and verbally swings a KO at Dad. It's not a joke, I hear it. It comes out of the forest, it's real and it's not funny. Mum wouldn't have laughed. A killer blow. Dad parries. Speaking of, have you called her this week? 
Silence. A double count out. They both avoid eye contact. No winners here. Dad knows he needs to be a grown up for the next bit, but he needs a moment for momentum. Mate, if you want to talk about what's going on with her and me and her illness again, we can talk all you. Mona interrupts again. I know, I know, it's not about that. It's about me getting eaten in my bed by screeching monsters. Dad is relieved to be talking about monsters and not mum. At least he thinks he can help with this problem. He can't, but he thinks he can. So he tries. Okay, I'm sorry for laughing. I apologize. Listen, how often do I bore you about history? Every day, Mona looks him in the eyes. There's an honesty in that reply. A harsh honesty. Every, every day? Dad huffs out dejectedly. Wow, that's a deep cut. Surely I say some interesting stuff. Anyway, how much do I like research? More than restocking the chocolate spread. Mona replies with a more playful type of honesty. Wow, you are really going for it tonight. Dad is relieved that they are now light-hearted again. Well, in all my research, in all the books I had to study, all the photos, all the old drawings, all the centuries old text from all over the world, I can positively say monsters do not exist and never have. Not one culture through the whole of recorded history has ever, ever supplied any actual evidence they are real. Lots have tales about nasty beasts, but that's just to make sure kids don't misbehave or wander off too far or go to bed on time. They're just stories and not one bit of proof has ever been uncovered. It's not history, not real, if you can't prove it. Monsters are a myth. Mona is in an instant grump again. What do you know about monsters? Mona looks at her prosthetic leg with repulsion, turns away from dad and curls in a grouchy fetal position. Dad notices. He doesn't know what to do, but he notices. He looks at her prosthetic leg. He looks at her. She looks small, fragile and grumpy. He knows she feels things deeply, too deeply, just like her mom. That's why he feels so helpless and afraid. And he doesn't know how to help or what to say. So he just tucks her in tighter, kisses her head. It's enough for now. He switches the light off and closes the door. Silence. <laughs> The roar is even nearer. Mona, now scared, but just grouchy enough to take the edge off, hops to the window to look out. In shock, she sees a massive shadowy figure cross her backyard. She can make out that it's 10 foot tall, hairy, scaly, with a big horn on its snout, and an unnecessary amount of bulging muscles. It disappears into the woods at the back of her house, bending trees out of its way. It looks like it could bend anything out of its way. <laughs> Mona is back under her safety blanket before the roar even ends.